Okay, so our game was really aimed at um, students who in the first couple of weeks need to find books in the library and just getting them familiar with how the classification system works, um, the subject areas and how the Dewey system works so that they can find the items that they need. So that was the, the target really with the game. Um, and we've based it on a well-known game, we've called it Bust the Block. Um, I think you can all guess what that uh, what well known game that's, that is. Um, the rules are um, you'd have two teams, uh, and in each team you've got no more than five or six per team. And we did say at the start it might be a good idea to get them to come up with their own team name for, for each team, and we give them a couple of minutes to do that. Um, and then well, the object of the game is basically to either you start either on this side or you can go across diagonally, you can go across um, horizontally, or you can go down um, vertically. Um, and basically, the number that you land on, um, you to actually start it off, we either roll a dice or flip a coin, and whoever gets the highest score goes first. And if you answer correctly, then you get to keep going, and you just need to make a chain across the board, but you can start at any point. Okay, but obviously just not in the centre, just around the edges. If you land on a number, well, if you go on to one of the numbers, you start in the chain, then you answer a question on that number. So, for example, with 150, I think, what do we have? Who is the father of psychoanalysis? Yes, and Sigmund do. Freud. So, and again, if you answer it correctly, if you land on a D block, a D block is slightly different. It's more about the mechanics of how the Dewey system works. And we've not done this very well on this particular board, but there should be whatever direction you go in a D block so that you can't escape one of the questions as a D question. And this could be either a true or false, or a put, put it, uh, three different numbers in order, do the order, for instance. Yeah. For that, we would we would give out um, the card With so the they don't have to put it in, you know, so that they can see it. Or we we also said that um, if we could, we'd we'd make a it a board game or it could be something you could do on an interactive whiteboard mm -hmm. so you could create this grid on the interactive whiteboard mm -hmm. and do it that way if you, um, if, you if you wanted to possibly you might need to investigate that and with the numbers instead of giving them the card with the numbers on it you could just put that on on the board as well for them to see so, so it could work either way basically yeah. yeah if you wanted to do it on the whiteboard that so, um, so once they've answered their true or false question, and again, it's just a case of guessing across. If they answer incorrectly, then it's the other turn, the team's, you know, other team's turn. Sorry, get the words out. Um, so that's that's basically the aim of the game: is to just get across and answer questions on the different subject areas, and also get some understanding of the jury system. But the very last bit that we decided to do was kind of go for a gamble. And although we didn't have a little spinner, I've drawn a little spinner here. <laughs> And if the winning team decides they want to go for the gamble, they'll win. Well, first of all, if they win, they get two pounds credit on their ID card to so print and photocopy. Mm -hmm. But if they want to go for the gamble, they can either get four pounds credit, as long as they spin the wheel and then answer a question correctly, or if they lose, the two pounds credit goes over to the losing team for each of their cards. Mm -hmm. So they kind of get a, a chance to kind of double their money or, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That was about it, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we've covered everything. I think we've covered everything. Um, Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, but wasn't that the same value as the prizes in the real blockbusters? Was it? <laughs> 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 yeah. And a blockbuster mug. <laughs> and a signed photo. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments about Buster Block? Is, is the money just virtual or could it be used as like? money they could use to pay their library fine? <laughs> it, it, it's money on their card that they can know. It's only for their printing and photocopying. But, oh, um, okay. yeah. it, might depend on, it might depend on the institution exactly. you're from, yeah. whether yeah. your system's yeah. set up yeah. though. And you could do yeah. it that way if you wanted to, really. But we thought it would be quite yeah. nice to have some sort of you know, prize incentive. Incentive. Mm. I think yeah. that's quite a nice to have something like that. Yeah. And we found that whenever we do student surveys, the way we get them to fill them in is to promise them credit on their card. Yeah. So that works, quite well. <laughs> that works well to get them interested. So. Where, where do you think they've got the knowledge from to do this? Well, we only we didn't give you an example of one of our questions. Uh, what we would do if we asked a question, for example, say somebody did, you know, like I said, land on six five eight business, we would say six five eight business so they would get the connection with the number and right. it's going to be just a very generalized question we're not going to make them very specific and difficult because obviously they're beginners well I'm, I'm assuming most of them will be beginners so we did for example who does the firing on the show the apprentice 
Alan Sugar. You know, most people, even if they're not interested in business, will get that, I should imagine. Which is why we've had to keep it very general as well, because our groups, when they sign up, they come from lots of different subjects. So we just have to, we just and need to get them to associate the number. I think with it's them. not a game where we're trying to sort of, I think it's something they can learn as they go along. So, like with mm. the Dewey numbers, they might not know, but they can have a best guess and they learn as the game goes along, then, mm. I think, rather mm. than they should know this beforehand necessarily. Yeah, exactly. And I think often you'll find that, I know it's quite a, a basic. Thing, but a lot of students don't have those mm. basic how to find a book and on the shelf. Sometimes students get confused even about the fact that you know a Dewey number can have two different authors. It might be 700 BAR, and they don't get that you know a different you know person could have written. You know. So it's just about getting their heads around. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.